Over two centuries ago, analytical chemists began their journey, developing tools and techniques that continue to evolve. Today, with electronic balances, automated titrators, and computer-controlled instruments, analytical chemistry is faster and more precise than ever. What took minutes in the past, now takes seconds, thanks to technology. Calculations that are once time to change are now instant with computers. But remember, some techniques are timeless and past now for centuries. Never modify procedures without proper guidance. Safety is paramount. Some tasks may like prepare solutions to create a change. Mastering analytical tools ensures success in chemistry and other related fields. Strive for high standard, accuracy, and precision in your analysis. Join us in this journey of discovery in the world of Analytical Chemistry! The purity of reagent has an important bearing on the accuracy obtained on any analysis. It is therefore essential that the quality of reagent is consistent with its intended use. Welcome to the world of chemical classification. First off, we have reagent-grade chemicals. These meet minimum standards set by the American Chemical Society, or ACS. Next, primary standard-grade chemicals. These are extraordinarily pure and come with detailed supplier analysis. And don't forget special purpose reagent chemicals. Tailored for specific applications, they come with useful usage information. Choose the right chemical grade for your analytical work. Knowledge is power. Rules for handling reagents and solutions. For high quality chemical analysis, we need pure reagents and solutions. But maintaining purity is crucial. Here are the rules to prevent contamination. Rule number one, choose the best grade in the smallest bottle for your needs. Rule number two, always replace the top immediately. Rule number three, never place the stopper on a desk. Rule number four, don't return excess region to a bottle. Rule number five, shake or top to dispense solids or use a clean spoon when needed. Rule number six, keep your workplace clean and tidy. Rule number seven, follow local regulation for disposal. By following these rules, we ensure the integrity of our reagents and solution, leading to precise results in our chemical analysis. Welcome everyone! Today, we are here to explain the importance of cleaning and marking laboratory wear for chemical analysis. Hi, I am here to talk about the importance of cleaning laboratory wares. Before conducting any chemical analysis, it's essential to ensure that all glassware is spotlessly clean. This prevents contamination and ensures accurate results. Start by washing the apparatus with a hot detergent solution, then rinse it thoroughly with top water, followed by several rinses with the ionized water. You'll know it's properly cleaned when the glassware has a uniform and unbroken film of water. In most cases, there's no need to dry the interior surface as it can introduce contamination. Hi! I'll be discussing the importance of marking laboratory wear. When conducting chemical analysis, it's common to use multiple vessels for duplicate and triplicate testing. To avoid confusion, it's crucial to mark each vessel. Flasks, beakers, and some crucibles have areas where you can make semi-permanent marking using a pencil. For porcelain surfaces, special marking inks are available. These markings become permanent when baked at a high temperature. Alternatively, a saturated solution of iron chloride can be used. So there you have it! Cleaning and marking are essential steps in ensuring accurate and reliable chemical analysis. Remember, a clean and properly marked vessels can make all the difference in your scientific experiments. Hello everyone, my name is Jamelix Spy. Today we are going to talk about the crucial laboratory techniques. 
evaporating liquids. That's right, Javel. When working with solutions containing volatile solids, sometimes we need to reduce their volume. Let's see how it works. As you can see, we use our reef covered glass to allow vapor to escape while protecting the solution from contamination. But here's the tricky part. Some of the solutions tend to overheat locally, leading to bumping and potential loss of the solutions. So we need to heat them carefully and gently to minimize the risk. Glass beads can also help prevent bumping if you are allowed to use them. Now, here is an important safety tip. If you want to remove unwanted substances during evaporation, like chloride or nitrite, always do it in a laboratory food. Right! For example, you can eliminate chloride and nitrite by adding sulfuric acid evaporating until you see white fumes of sulfur dioxide. And, if you need to remove nitrite ion and nitrogen oxides from acidic solutions, try using urea. And to get rid of ammonium chloride, simply add concentrated nitric acid and evaporate the solution to a small volume. The ammonium ion will be oxidized and the solution can be evaporated to dryness. Lastly, for removing organic constituents, add sulfuric acid and heat until you see sulfur trioxide fumes. But remember, always do this in a laboratory hood. It's called wet ashing. So there you have it. The basics of evaporating liquids and some tips on removing unwanted substances safely. Remember, safety first in the lab. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. In most analysis, an analytical balance is used to measure masses with high accuracy. Less accurate laboratory balances are also used for mass measurements when the demands for reliability are not critical. Types of analytical balances. Analytical balances are precision instruments for measuring mass. They range from 1 gram to few kilograms in capacity. Modern ones offer precision up to one part in a million at full capacity. Micro balances, 160 to 200 grams with 0.0601 milligrams precision. Semi-microanalytical, 10 to 30 grams with 0.06001 milligrams. Microanalytical, 1 to 3 grams with 0.000001 grams or micrograms precision. Analytical balances have evolved from traditional equal arm balances to single pan balances. And now, electronic analytical balances. Faster, more accurate, and computer controlled. Precautions in using analytical balance. Analytical balance is delicate, so here's how to use it safely. Center your load on the pan and use non-reactive materials. Take extra care when weighing liquids, refer to section 2E-6. When in doubt, consult your instructor for adjustment. Wait for a heated object to cool before weighing. Handle dried object with care to avoid moisture transfer. Remember this step for an accurate result with your analytical balance. When it comes to weighing, accuracy is the key. But did you know that the common source of error is buoyancy? Buoyancy error occurs when the density of the object being weighed differs significantly from that of standard masses. It's all about the difference in buoyant force in the air. To correct for this error, you can use an equation. W1 is the corrected mass of the object, W2 is the mass of the standard masses, and there are factors for density involved. Here's the catch. This error is less than 0.1% for objects with density of 2 grams per cubic centimeter or greater. So for most solids, no correction is needed. But for low-density solids, liquids, or gases, it's crucial. Masses used in balances vary in density, so using 8 grams per cubic centimeter is usually close enough for greater precision, referred to the manufacturer's specification. Temperature effects Trying to weigh a hot object in a different temperature environment can lead to significant errors. This happens because convection currents and warm air can affect the apparent mass of the object, making it seem lighter. To avoid this error, always let heated objects cool to room temperature before weighing. Ever wonder why your balance go haywire sometimes? 
Low humidity and static charges can wreak havoc. But here's the solution. Wipe it with a faintly damp camoise or use a static master brush. And don't forget to regularly check your balance with a 100 mg mass. Maintain precision, avoid errors. The mass of many solids changes with humidity because they tend to absorb weighable amounts of moisture. This effect is especially pronounced when a large surface area is exposed as with a reagent chemical or a sample that has been ground to a fine powder. Introducing weighing bottles. Weighing bottles are essential for drying and storing solids. Two common types are shown here. Notice the cup style bottle where the ground glass is on the outside. This design prevents sample loss, a crucial advantage. Plastic weighing bottles are rough but can be easily abraded. Cleaning glass is easier compared to plastic. Choose the right weighing bottles for your needs in the lab. Precision matters. Desiccators and desiccators. Desiccators are used to store dried materials and prevent moisture uptake. The base contains a drying agent like calcium chloride or derit. A good seal is crucial. Slide and rotate the lid gently for an airtight fit. Be cautious when dealing with temperature changes to avoid breaking the seal or creating a vacuum. Keep your materials dry and safe. The size of moisture control. In the lab, proper sample preparation is crucial for accurate results. To remove moisture from solid, heat them at 105 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. Follow the recommended setup for drying your example. Don't forget to mark your beaker for easy identification. Avoid touching dried objects with your fingers. Use tongs, camois, finger cuts, gloves, or paper clips instead. Remember, precision in every step leads in accurate results. Introducing weighing by difference. Step 1. Weigh the bottle and its contents. Step 2. Carefully transfer a sample to a container. Step 3. Weigh the bottle with its remaining contents. Step 4. Calculate the mass of your sample as the difference between the two masses. Weighing by difference. The simple and precise method for sample mass elimination in your lab. In the world of science, precision, Weighing hygroscopic solid is a crucial task. These substances eagerly absorb moisture from the head, demanding special care. Start by placing the required amount of sample into individual bottle and heat them for the appropriate duration. Once heated, cap the bottle and cool them in a desiccator and remove any moisture. To weigh, open a bottle momentarily to relieve any vacuum. Empty the contents into a receiving vessel. Cap it immediately and weigh the bottle again. Repeat this process for each sample to determine their masses accurately by difference. Weighing liquids a precise method. Determine the mass of a liquid. Use a sealed glass ampule for volatile or corrosive liquids. Heat the ampule, immerse it in the sample, and as it cools, the liquid is drawn into the bulb, then seal it. Cool, weigh the ampule and its contents, including any glass. Then transfer to a container, break the ampule, and correct for volume if needed. Accurate liquid measurement made simple, science at its finest. Several techniques and experimental arrangements allow solids to be filtered and ignited with minimal contamination and error. In the world of laboratory works, the choice of apparatus is critical to the accuracy of your experiments. Simple crucibles made of materials like porcelain aluminum oxide, silica, and platinum maintain constant mass and are used to convert precipitates for weighing. Filtering crucibles, which also serves as filters, 
speed up the filtration process using vacuum seals. They come in different porosities and materials like sintered glass, quartz, or unglazed porcelain. Filter paper, especially ashless paper, is essential. It's treated to remove impurities, but it can absorb moisture, so it must be ignited to weigh the collective precipitate. Proper heating equipment is crucial. Low temperature drying ovens maintain constant temperatures, while microwave ovens can significantly shorten drying cycles. Burner and electric furnaces are also essential for different temperature ranges. Remember, safety is paramount in the lab. Always use appropriate safety gear when handling heating equipment at high temperatures. Choose your apparatus wisely to ensure precise and reliable results in your experiments. In analytical chemistry, precise measurements are crucial. Let's dive into the process of filtering and igniting precipitates. To weigh a precipitate accurately, start by preparing your cruci ball, clean it thoroughly, ensuring it maintains a constant mass throughout drying or ignition. Next, in the filtering process, use decantation to pass the liquid through the filter while keeping the solid undisturbed. This prevents clogging and speed of filtration. Wash the precipitate several times before transferring it to the filter. Direct streams of wash liquid for efficient transfer and use a rubber policeman to collect any remaining traces. Watch out for creeping precipitates, avoid overfilling the filter, and consider using a non-ionic detergent like Triton X100 to prevent spreading. Lastly, for gelatinous precipitates, through washing is crucial before drying as they tend to shrink and develop cracks during the process. Mastering these techniques ensures an accurate measurements in analytical chemistry. In the world of laboratory work, precision is the key. Today, we will guide you through essential steps for filtering and igniting precipitates. First, prepare your filter paper. Fold it in half, then fold it again. Tear off a triangular piece along the second fold and open it into a cone. Place the cone in the funnel, crease it, and dampen it with water. Now, for ashing filter papers, use a heat lump or burner carefully. For a heat lump, position it about 1 cm above the crucible and sharing will occur. For a burner, start with a small flame. Gradually increase heat. Watch for smoke. Wisps are normal, but if it is increases, hot heating and extinguish any flames. To minimize issues with a burner, consider a tilted crucible position for better air access. Use a clean crucible cover to extinguish flames if necessary. Remember, these steps for filtering and igniting precipitates is to ensure an accurate results to your laboratory work. The precise measurement of a volume is as important to many analytical methods as the precise measurement of mass. Welcome to the world of precise volume measurement in the laboratory. Today, we will introduce you to the assumption apparatus, pipettes, gearheads, and volumetric glass, and how to use them accurately. Pipettes come in a various types. Volumetric pipettes deliver a single fixed volume while measuring. Pipettes allow you to deliver any volume within their capacity. Fill all pipettes to their calibration mark, but the method of emptying virus, some retain a small amount of liquid, while others are blown clean. Handheld Eppendorf micropipettes offer adjustable microliter volumes, air is displaced, liquid drawn, and dispensed with precision using a locking digital micrometer adjustment. 
for repetitive tasks, automatic pipettes and motorized computer-controlled microliter pipettes are available. They provide accuracy, precision, and a wide range of volumes. Burets allow precise delivery of any volume and they excel in precision the future different valve systems such as pinch cock valves and glass or teflon stop cocks. Volumetric flasks are essential for preparing standard solutions and sample dilution. They are cal calibrated to contain or to deliver a specific volume. In the lab, accuracy and precision are crucial. Mastering the use of pipettes, burettes, and volumetric flasks ensures precise volume measurement making your experiments a success. Using a volumetric equipment is a quick guide. Volume markings are crucial in the lab, but they require cleanliness to be accurate. A warm detergent soap removes dirt and grease, ensuring a uniform liquid film. Thoroughly rinse with top water and distilled water to maintain precision. Watch out for parallax. Use the bottom of the meniscus and ensure your eye is level with the liquid surface. Remember, cleanliness and precision go hand in hand in the world of volumetric equipment. Welcome! Today we explore the essential process of calibrating volumetric glassware. Volumetric glassware ensures precise measurements in the laboratory. So calibrate it if you follow these steps. First, Measure the mass of known density, temperature, equilibrated water in your volumetric wear. Remember, you must correct for buoyancy due to water's density difference from the masses used. Calculation can be time-consuming manually, but automation in spreadsheets simplifies the process. Correct the raw mass data for buoyancy. Calculate the volume at the calibration temperature and then adjust it to the standard 20 degrees Celsius. Ensure all glassware is free of water breaks before collaboration. Water should be in thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. Analytical balances work, but the top loading balance is suitable for most volumes. Weigh the stopware receiver and transfer temperature equilibrated water using the pipette. Calculate the delivered mass and volume. Repeat multiple times, calculating the mean volume delivered and its standard deviation. Fill the bullet, ensure no bubbles, and allow drainage. Lower the liquid to 0.0 ml. Mark and recheck after 10 minutes. Transfer water to a flask. Weigh and convert the mass to true volume using table 2 to 3. Repeat until agreement within 0.02 ml. Weigh a clean, dry flask. Fill to the mark with equilibrated water and reweigh. Use table. 2 to 3 to calculate the volume contained. To partition samples, transfer 10 aliquots from a pipette to a volumetric flask. Mark the meniscus and cover with label varnish for permanence. Dilution to the label mark allows precise one ten aliquots. Remember, recalibrate if using a different pipette. And there you have it, the steps in calibrating the volumetric glasser. Ensuring accurate measurements in the laboratory. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more informative presentation. The laboratory notebook is needed to record measurements and observations concerning an analysis. The book should be permanently bound with consecutively numbered pages, and if necessary, the pages should be hand numbered before any entries are made. In your laboratory notebook is crucial for accurate scientific research. Rule number one, record all data and observation directly in ink, ensuring neatness. Rule number two, label each entry with a clear heading like empty crucible mass. Rule number three, always date each pages as you use it. Rule number four, Never erase mistakes. Cross them out with a single line. Rule number five. Never remove pages 
draw diagonal lines to disregard and provide a brief rationale. By following these rules, ensure data integrity and reliable experiments. Maintain your lab notebook diligently for scientific excellence. Are you unsure about how to maintain your laboratory notebook? Let's break it down! First, always consult your instructor for specific formatting guidelines. In one common convention, data is recorded as it happens and then the analysis is summarized. On the first facing page, include first, the experiment title, second, principles of analysis, third, data for calculations, fourth, best value and precision. On the second page, include first, principal reaction equations, second, equation for result calculation, Third, observations validating results recorded at the time. Following these guidelines ensures accuracy and completeness in your laboratory notebook. Welcome to the laboratory where safety is paramount. Accidents can happen, but we're here to prevent them. Let's follow these vital safety rules. Rule number one, know the location of the safety equipment and know how to use it. Rule number two, always wear a glass protection. It's a must. Regular glasses won't cut it. Use OSHA approved eye protection. Rule number three, avoid skin contact with chemicals. Breathe with water if it happens. Don't worry about the modesty. Safety comes first. Rule number four, no unauthorized experiment is a serious matter. Rule number five, never work alone. Always have someone nearby. Rule number six, no food or drinks in the lab. Rule number seven, use proper tools for liquid transfer. No pipetting by now. Rule number eight, wear proper attire, no sandals, and secure long hair. Rule number nine, be cautious with the hat glass, it all looks the same. Okay. Rule number ten, use soapy water with inserting glass into stoppers. Rule number 11. Use fume hoods for toxic gases. Task for odor safety. Rule number 12. Notify your instructor if there is an injury. Rule number 13. Dispose of chemicals as instructed. Protect the environment. Remember, safety is everyone's responsibility in the laboratory. Stay safe, follow the rules, and prevent accidents. In this chapter, we delve into the world of chemicals, apparatus, and unit operations. That's for today, and see you in our next episodes as we explore the world of... Analytical Chemistry! Bye!